Welcome back. This week, Senate Finance Committee Chairman Max Baucus unveiled his plan for health care reform. He had no Republican support. The reception from his own party was mixed. Joining us now from the Capitol is Ohio's Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown, a member of the Health and Banking Committees. Senator Brown, I know you were disappointed with the Senate Finance Committee health care bill that Max Baucus produced, but let me tell you what Bill Clinton said. Uh, he said that Baucus has produced the best bill the political traffic would bear, and that in the end, even a couple Republicans will support. I, I agree that in the end, a couple Republicans will support. I, I go back to the 1960s. I mean, I thinking, reading, and thinking about what happened with Medicare. Almost no Republicans in the House, for instance, supported Medicare on the crucial votes, but a lot of them had buyer's remorse. They regretted that they were on the wrong side of history. And I think some more forward-looking Republicans in the end are going to come around and vote for this. It's not going to be the plan that Baucus had, with all due respect to President Clinton. It's going to be the plan much more similar to the three House bills or the, the Senate version of the Health, Education, Labor, Pension Committee, the bill that came out of Senator Kennedy's, Senator Dodd's committee. And that's we're going to end up with a good bill with, I think, a strong public option. Do you think that uh, Senator Baucus, for all of his good intentions, then got rolled by the Republicans on his finance committee? Um, I will put it this way. I would not have done it the way Senator Baucus did. I respect his legislative skills. He's chairman of the finance committee. You don't get there. Um, without some amount of legislative skills and political skills in a state like Montana to, to, to stay in office for five terms. But um, I, I think that Senator Grassley and Senator Enzi had no real intention um, to support a bill that would, be, that, would, that would be a bill that could pass the Democratic um, side of the aisle, too. I mean, you know, it, it, we, we passed in our Health, Education, Labor, Pension Committee, Al, we passed a bill that had 160 Republican amendments. I voted for almost all of them. Um, they made the bill better. They um, gave a, a bipartisan flavor to the bill, but on the big issues of the public option, the big issues of, of subsidies for middle class Americans that can't quite afford their insurance, on those issues, on the on insurance reform, the Republicans are on a pretty short leash from insurance companies. The Republicans couldn't get to, couldn't vote for those. So on the, on the real fundamental differences, it's philosophical between the parties. It's not, it's not particularly partisan. And, and Enzi and, and, and um, Grassley, I work with Enzi a lot on the Health Committee. I like him and respect him. But he wasn't going to support what we really need in this system. And that is to wean ourselves off of the drug companies and the, and the, and the um, insurance companies the way that the opposite of what happened when, in, in the Medicare bill five years ago. And how about Olympia Snow? Olympia Snow surely up for grabs. Um, I think negotiating with her made total sense. Um, she's not writing the bill, though, I and mean, she's going to have an impact on it and input into it as she should. Um, but I, it's clear that, you know, on the issue of the public option, for instance, the physicians, an overwhelming percentage of doctors, according to a recent survey from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, something like 70% of doctors said they like the public option. The public's overwhelmingly supportive, and Democrats in both houses, 60, 70, 80, maybe 90% of the Democrats in the Senate support the public option. So that's why, that's why we're going to get a good bill with a good, strong public option that, that is, is going to have good insurance company reform. No more pre-existing condition, no more discrimination because of gender and disability and age and and um, and, and, and and any other reason. I'm going to ask you one about the public option just a second. One more Republican member, your colleague George Voinovich. You think there's any chance he'll vote for a bill? I think there is a chance George Voinovich will vote for it. I I hear people in Ohio saying to that they're saying to George Voinovich, you know, Senator Voinovich, this is this is a this is a time when you really help to to sort of solidify your legacy. He's had a long, proud history of public service in Ohio, and this would be a good cap to that public service. Standing up to some of the some of the haters in his party, um, standing up and, and being independent. He's been an independent voice for a lot of years in voting for a, a bill that 10 years from now he can look back and say to his children, his grandchildren, nobody loves their grandchildren more than George Voinovich. I know him that well. And he can say to his grandchildren, I did the right thing and passed this health care bill that's working for our country. And if you can't get the robust public option you want, and a number of Democrats like Joe Lieberman and Ben Nelson say they won't support it, what kind of a backup would you accept, Senator? Well, I think we will. I guess I don't want to answer that because I think we will okay. get, I mean, I don't know exactly what robust means, except that's sort of the, the adjective to jour in the last few it months. It is. But I, I do think it's going to be a strong. And, you know, there's things in this bill I'm not going to, I don't really like either, but I expect to vote for the bill. And I expect that other Democratic senators, when the president calls them, when Harry Reid calls them, and says, you know, you can't, you can't kill health care reform on a procedural vote. 
Uh, I think that they're going to want to be on the right side of history the way that I think some number of Republicans will want to be on the right side of history. Let me turn to financial regulation. The G20 meets in Pittsburgh uh, next week. Uh, the French say there ought to be a cap on compensation for global bank executives. Uh, Secretary Geithner and President Obama say no. Who's right? Uh, well, I think the French are right on that one. I don't know that that's going to be part of our legislation. I think it's something we should seriously consider. International, it's not just the French. Most of the, uh, the, those, the International Financial Board recently uh, in Financial Times, I was reading it, said the same thing. Um, I think we, we need to be more aggressive, and that's why Chris Dodd staying as chairman of the banking committee is a good thing, particularly on the consumer side of the financial, um, of the, of the consumer protection agency for financial services, so that, so that, that, that people that are investors and people that deal in, 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 in that side of the financial services equation get better protection than and they've Senator, gotten from these regulators. Do you think you'll get a financial regulation bill this week, or this year rather, as President Obama told Bloomberg this week that he thought he would? Yeah, I, I think we, I think we, we can. I don't know if we will. It depends on what, you know, how much time health care consumes and how much of our energies it saps. But I, I have no doubt we're going to get a good financial services bill with a, with a strong consumer protection in it by early next year at the latest, Al. We have 15 seconds left, Senator. Very quickly, a timetable for withdrawing troops from Afghanistan. You for it or against it? Um, not sure yet. I, I, I'm, I don't like the idea of sending more troops now. I was in Afghanistan with Senator Casey two weeks ago. I like how the civilian military side are coming together and working better with the Afghans, but I, I'm not at all sure that I don't know about a troop withdrawal, but I, I'm, I'm not at all convinced we need more troops there. Okay. Thanks, Senator Brown. Yes.